Hello and welcome back once again to the one, the only, the single Malt Review. Mm. That was quite a good, quite a good intro that one I thought. Yeah. Um, but enough about that. What are we having a look at today? Yes. Today it's a blend. It's a classic blend. It is a universally known blend. Bells. Yes, mm. it's a uh, Edrington blend. They are the Johnny Walker people among, well, among a great many other whiskey products. I think by quite a margin, the largest whiskey portfolio on the globe. Mm. Well, Scotch whiskey, anyway. And yes, they bring us this, you'd have to call it bottom shelf budget category. You know, mm. it's an, it is an ordinary blend. It is, oh dear, it is a large pour, but regardless, it is representative of still the majority of whiskey in the world. You know, um, there's a lot of whiskey made, but most of it, rather than going into all the interesting single malts and stuff that we enjoy here, most of it goes here. Um, no age statement, litre bottles, clogging up your friendly neighbourhood liquor store or supermarket. This is where it ends up, still. Um, less so now that the sort of whiskey boom is in full swing and um, single malts and aged blends are getting more and more fashionable, but the uh, large majority of it, still this is where it goes. So important, if not interesting. So we'll touch on it at mm. the very least. And 40% and almost what goes without saying, oh, colored yes. and filtered. Child filtered, 40%, about as ordinary as you can make yeah. a whiskey, and that's fine. You know, that's, that's, uh, that is the category upon which it sits. Mm. Um, as for the taxonomics of the blend, it's pretty difficult to really give it a title. You know, Teachers mm. is the PT one, um, Grants is the independent one, owned by the, um, owned by the, uh, oh, where's it gone, the Glen Fittick people, um, so more independent than people really give it credit for. Bells is just sort of another one. Um, that probably throw that into the category with Dave's review of the Dewar's White Label and, and similar similar whiskies like that. Very difficult to describe because they are very, very, very similar. Mm. So we'll just sort of taste it on its own merits, I suppose, and we won't spend huge quantities mm. of time on it. And you're telling me, was it, say, Diageo brand, ultimately? Diageo. That Diageo means the same stable as like the classic malt range, so there could be some quantities of oh, yeah. Craig and Moore, um, Dally, there could be. There could be, and probably is, mm. oodles and oodles of different whiskies, because yeah. Diageo has a heap to play with. Mm. Um, as for Talisker and peated whiskies, I think probably not so much, because oh, yeah. there's... There's really not any mm. peat here. Um, we will we will catch up with um, Diageo and its ah. peated whiskies shortly in another episode, but I don't think they really feature here. This is it's a very very middle of the range hmm. range <laughs> raid. There's something wrong with my ability to say road. Mm. There we go, middle of the road blend. Um, it's not really doing any one particular mm. thing. If I was to suggest a distillery in here, I'd probably say they use quite a lot of Cardhu, oh. or Cardhu, or however you like to say it. Um, that's a big, 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 big um, blending malt producer they've got there, and that sort of forms the backbone of a lot of their a lot of the Diageo blends, mm. to my knowledge, anyway. So, uh, if nothing else, we're probably getting a fair whack of Cardhu in here. So, what have we got on the nose? Mm, there's a lot of grain there. <sighs> yes, there is. Hearty whack of it. A little bit of a slightly a mineral edge, was very slightly mm. turpentiny. Mm. Where I think at the right temperature today, it is yeah. since we last filmed, that has suddenly become winter over here. So you're probably most of our viewers mm. enjoying a bit nicer weather. Autumn has been cancelled the... straight into the cold. Stuff. Oh yeah, just boom. Um, it was quite weird mm. actually. So um, as opposed to last time we were filming, we were just sitting here visibly sweating. <laughs> More and more as the jolly episodes went on, mm. um, it's now quite good cold whiskey temperature. So um, it's mm. not the, the grain is actually quite nice at this temperature. Yeah. It's what I describe as a crunchy aroma, mm. and people will get cross for me using textural <laughs> words again. But that's what it. Yeah, it's like crunchy cereal grain. It's putting me in mind a bit of um, some of the American corn whiskey we mm. tried, just a little bit, and otherwise. Very gentle, no burn, yeah. um, not a whole lot of anything mm. really. So we won't we won't prattle about the nose mm. for ages. A bit of, bit of malt there, a bit of um, what we yeah. think of as quintessentially Scotch aroma. Ooh. That is mild, and again a little bit, very little bit of a peat there. Mm. It's mild, mm. very very sweet. Yeah, 
Um, that's probably something. That's one flag you could give to dogs. Mm. It is really quite a sweet, yeah, sweet blend, uh, especially compared to the likes of things like teachers, which are quite quite dry, mm. and um, cutty sarks and things. Uh, very very light and crisp. This has a bit more weight. It has a lot of malt sweetness going mm. on, and yeah, it faintest with a peat and a little bit of that sort of mineral property I mentioned mm. before. Just a wee bit of sort of flintiness going mm. on in there. Um, sweet but quite clean as well. Yeah. It does not linger on the palate, just a gentle warmth, a little bit of ginger, mm. and then it's dry. It's it doesn't have a particularly pleasant finish mm. as it sort of warms up in the mouth and you get the you get the aftertaste. Mm. You know it's not great if I start calling it aftertaste <laughs> and not finish. Um, that's where the grain kind of gets a little bit mm. raw and the extreme youth of the whiskey really, really comes yeah. out. I think it's quite good up front. You get that good, round, sweet, rich smoothness. But then, as it kind of diminishes, it's pretty... That has, that grain has quite a rough edge on it to yeah, me. The and finish it's not quite is as good. dominated by kind of just lingering alcohol heat mm. more than anything else. That's what stays around the longest. Um, but you're not really supposed to sit and cogitate on your no. cheap blended whiskey. You're supposed to keep drinking it. And yeah. so that's kind of a problem that solves itself mm. in that um, capacity. And I've had, um, as you can see, plenty of this, and I drink it mostly with ice. Um, when I'm not thinking, when I'm, when I'm doing something else normally, um, like producing videos, which I've been extremely slow with, um, it's just kind of one of those whiskies. It's an ambient whisky. Mm. It's not a focused whisky, and it'll take an ice cube perfectly happily. Yeah. Um, obviously, that will completely dispense with any mystique <laughs> that might have been going on. But that's not a that's not a big problem. And if you wanted to blend it with ginger ale or whatever, then this would be a whisky mm. to go for. Do a blend just fine, I'm saying. If you're into that sort mm. of stuff. So I think um, in terms of recommend it or not, which is probably the most relevant thing I can mm. say about these cheap blends, there are ones that I like more or less. This one I'm pretty pleased with. Um, the score for it, I'll give it a 74. Mm. You know, it's, it's fine, it's decent, um, yeah. and it's extremely cheap. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's the sort of the seat that it sits on. What do you what do you think? Yeah, it does what it's set out to do. It's a entirely drinkable blend. It has no particularly outstanding strong points. It doesn't bitterly disappoint either or try and talk itself up. I give it around sixty nine. Mm. Yeah, yeah, solid enough stuff. Mm. Um, it doesn't uh, doesn't sort of punch above its station. Yeah. Uh, that nor does it price itself above its station. Mm. So there you go. I think it's a it's a blend that I would recommend more than I would. Uh, turn people away from, mm. and so take that as you will if you're looking for a real um, shelf stuffer mm. uh, for any particular occasion. So there you go, that is Bell's Blended Scotch Whiskey. And now I think we'll get on to something just a wee bit more, a wee bit more exciting, since ah. we've got a few things in the bag here, one of which I'm particularly looking forward to, so um, we will waste no time there. So this has been Single Malt Review with Bell's Ding Dong.